Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. This time we are talking about a measurement device where we can really do dynamic measurements. Let's think about the dynamic behavior. Yeah? In former times when we only used pointer devices without this digital uh, multimeters and so on, uh, well, uh, you know, if, there, if, the, if the measured quantity is changing, then the pointer has also to change. And because of the mass of the pointer, because it's simply heavy, this change cannot be as fast as, as necessary to really watch uh, fast changing signals. If you want to see the, the sine wave in our power plug, for instance, yeah? you cannot see it on a 50 times per second, and this is not even fast. Yeah? So, uh, engineers work to make the pointer lighter. And the most lightweight pointer they could come up with is a pointer made of electrons. Problem is, you have to see it. Yeah, you want to see it. And so there is the tube, yeah, the brown's tube. Yeah. How is this working? There is, there was some, some screen. Yeah. There was some screen. This was coated with some material. Whenever electrons hit the screen with a certain energy, this screen will light up. All right. And there is somewhere is some electron source. Yeah. It's the electron source. And this electron source is producing an electron beam. And this electron beam is hitting the screen somewhere yeah, at some point. So this is a beam. And this is a light point. That's it. To, to bring the, an electron from here to here, you have to put here some voltage, yeah, that the electron is attracted to this voltage and it's really you know, fast hitting. And, uh, and this now is a pointer, which is pointing, and I make it visible with the screen. Yeah? So this is a screen here. Yeah? And yeah. Now I only have to direct the point in a certain way. Okay. How might I influence the way of, of an electron? Yeah. By applying an, a magnetic, uh, magnetic, it's a electric field, of course. Yeah. By applying an electric field, there is a force on, on electrons in an electric field. So I only have to, to do here some plates. Here, I make plates. Yeah. These plates I connect to the outside world. And here I apply my measured voltage. Yeah. This is where voltage I want to measure. This can be very fast. And now the pointer will go up and down. Yeah. It would also be nice if it can go left and right. So there are also there are also plates located in this direction. One here. One here. Yeah. And this Two plates, I apply to a generator. Yeah? This is an internal voltage. Yeah? How does the internal voltage look like? The internal voltage usually looks like that. Yeah? Let's start somewhere. 
go up, whoop, go down, go up, go down. So this point is always start here. This plate is attracting. Start here, and then this is exactly what this voltage is doing. All right, so this is the time. And when this measurement voltage is changing over time, I see this form of the measurement voltage. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And the measured voltage might look somehow, yeah, somewhere like that. Ooh. For the indicator, yeah. this is this is the x direction, yeah, and this is the y direction on the screen. Yeah, if this is if this is x and this is y and so I see exactly this part at my screen yeah in the next time I see this part and you see it's looking different so it this this will move yeah so I have to synchronize this voltage and this voltage somehow yeah? I have to synchronize those two and usually, there is a trigger event. Yeah? So usually there's a trigger event. So if I again draw this, and I hope I can manage to draw it very similar. Yeah. Then there's a trigger level. Whenever the input, whenever the input is triggered, is reaching this trigger event, I will start to to rise with my with my UI. Yeah? Then I will go back to zero. And here the trigger is triggered again, and here I start to rise. So then we have some pauses in between. But we always see the same the same portion of my swing. And this this is how I can uh, you know, realize that I have a picture which is in standstill. Yeah, simply by using the trigger trigger event. Yeah. So periodical signals. I can use with this trigger. There is, this is how this works. Yeah? And this is why you have all those things on a modern oscilloscope as well, you know, a trigger level and so on. Now you know what is behind. Modern oscilloscope are working with a memory. Okay, they are working with a, there is the measurement voltage. Yeah? Then there's a fast analog digital converter. Yeah. Fast. <laughs> and then there's a memory. With a lot of with a lot of memory slots. And the, this is fired. Next, 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 next. And do, 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 do. and it's filling up the memory. Okay? And what I actually see. Yeah. What I actually see on the screen is just the dots of the memory. I only see the what is inside the memory. So the result of the ADC of the very fast, fast ADC, and I see those, do those dots. However, on the screen, those dots are interconnected to each other. All right. So if for me it looks like 
I have the, all the data in between, but in reality, I only have data at certain points in time. I have to keep this in mind, because if I have here a measurement and here a measurement, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, it, In between, what happened in between, I cannot tell. So if the signals are getting too fast for the ADC, I will not measure the correct the correct signal. Yeah? If the signal was getting too fast for this old style oscilloscope, then I would still see a little bump, but you know, then we have this dynamic behavior of measurement system we talked about. Here I'm simply losing it. Yeah? However, no, don't worry. Yeah? In with modern electronics and with modern storage capabilities and 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 how fast those things are. <sighs> you will probably be fine. I'm not sure what you're measuring or what you will measure in your life, but you know, you have maybe to think about it, but in the majority of things, it does not really matter. Eh? And now those displays, eh, they don't need to be with this tube. Eh? They don't need to be big. Now, nowadays oscilloscopes are rather small and, and, and handy with the TFT display and so on. And you can zoom and, you know, you can do one shot. Yeah, fill in the, the, the memory. And then you can even, you cannot even watch uh, periodic things. You can, things which happen only once. Yeah, a peak or something like this. You can record this and watch it over and over again. So there are, mu it is a good development. Uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, this is called storage oscilloscope. Yeah, or digital storage or digital storage oscilloscope. This is what it is today. But you know, you have all those knobs and so on with trigger and so. So I explained this, this stuff also, that you know a little bit where it's coming from. Oscilloscope. Yeah. There are also digital storage oscilloscopes, which are, uh, well, they are not, uh, they cannot measure in detail. Yeah? So this ADC converter is not really converting very detailed, but can only distinguish between high and 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 low for instance yeah then you have a so-called logic analyzer so a logic analyzer is a digital storage oscilloscope with adc is one bit adc yeah and therefore very fast all right yeah that's for measuring electrical quantities yeah. Now let's measure non-electrical values. Let's see how this is working. An introduction to this, how how this is working. Those things are called sensors, yeah, but we will discuss this in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.